Uh, I'm Robert Galarza with uh, Blockstring Technology Corp. We're uh, based out of Vancouver, uh, BC. Been in the Canadian uh, cannabis market uh, since 2015 and the cannabis market all in all since uh, a lot longer than that, about eight years. Uh, in technology, our company is focused on essentially genetic verification and testing data to bring integrity to the cannabis industry from a uh, genomics perspective so that uh, customers and patients can know what it is they're buying uh, in this evolving marketplace, uh, specifically as Canada is starting to grow and the supply and demand curve is where it is right now. Um, show a little bit here on, a, on our presentation, obviously. We, uh, co the concept is a single source of trust, right? Genomics brings, uh, and genomic science that we've seen evolve over the past few years, brings really unique and innovative uh, aspects to how we can identify this very unique plant and how it affects our endocannabinoid system. Um, the framework of our company was built upon one key principle, which is uh, right now producers are looking at the art and science of their strains and identifying that genomic information. And all of that requires tenacity, perseverance. Th these are very unique um, intellectual property uh, uh, aspects to what's being grown and cultivated. Millions of dollars are being placed into actually uh, cultivating this product, but it becomes incredibly important for us to be able to distinguish different qualities of product as well as different products for medicinal purposes as well from a patient perspective. So our areas of focus have been in two separate areas. One is genetic identification and intellectual property protection, and the second being efficient testing. Uh, so in the framework of a, of a licensed producer per se, as the volume is increasing, as demand is increasing, it becomes that much more imperative to say, look, this is my product, I know what it is, I can provide that information quickly and rapidly to consumers, and second to that, here is all of the, te the testing aspects of the product, being able to get through rapidly and efficiently, and then linking that into a blockchain, an immutable blockchain, really from the purposes of being able to uh, validate all of those points as it's moving across the supply chain. So we do integrate in with seed to sale tracking systems. We integrate into third party ERP systems. Our software is built in a way to be able to be a part of the transactional process for testing. So the more the industry grows, the more product we can get through the testing pipes, the better we do as a company as a whole. Um, this leads into the two big challenges. Two big challenges for the licensed production market. Number one is protect, protecting intellectual property. So as these strains are being grown and cultivated, it becomes that much more important for us to basically go out, we do an entire whole genome sequence associated to a master strain. Uh, then we do uh, rapid validation tests associated with the lineage off those strains. So we can both connect the product that's been grown and the mother sources from those, as well as all the tertiary products, uh, any of the secondary products that come off of it as well, such as you know uh, vape pens when they come online and the edibles market as it comes online. We're looking to be able to say, look, this is the source material associated with growing it. Here I can provide that information. But here's the interesting part for the growers. As growers are coming online and we're trying to attract that micro craft market, the 26,000 growers out there that are creating their own unique strains, we want to be able to make sure we use a system, as, we, as you can see here, that's an actual strain vault, that in a period of time, those genetics are recorded, they're physically given to the producers, there's, they're placed, they're anchored to an immutable blockchain for record keeping purposes, and really being able to say, look, this is your strain, this is yours you know, from here to the end of, end of time, and, in a lot of ways, we want to be able to open up innovation because at that point, growers and cultivators are maybe more willing to license their, their uh, intellectual property to some of the big, the big boys and, and get this product to market so that the patients can have access to it. Uh, with that, that actually links into the actual strain vault itself. Uh, this is the legal genetic verification system. So we not only provide our customers with uh, the digital record associated with it in a, in a block on, you know, on a ledger, but we actually provide those genetics back to those customers. And the reason we do so is because you know, as these cultivators are, are starting to evolve, they're trying to better understand why their strains are doing certain things over a period of time, even within the growth cycle, right? So as we're better, better able to aggregate this genetic information, we can then rapidly provide that information back to our customers, and they're able to have actionable intelligence on their grow. Um, beyond that, that lends, lends into the actual intellectual property protection, which is built within our digital strain vault. This allows rapid verification of product uh, from a genetics perspective. So at the end of the day, Consumers can take that QR code, scan it, it'll render all the testing data associated with that product, link it back to the genetic makeup to where we can say, this, not, this you know, product not only has this THC level, this CBD level, but it also 
is the exact ghost train haze or CBD blend that uh, it says it was from the mother source. Uh, it does a couple different things for the marketplace. One, it eliminates the ability for there to be diversion, right? Black market product entering the market. And that's not really at the higher level, that's not really the fear, but it's more the low level suppliers that might be pulling product in from the gray or black market. We want to eliminate that from the marketplace. And then really what it boils down to is being able to distinguish and then at that point fight commoditization. If I know this is a, a product that I want, maybe I'll pay more for it if it's going to maintain consistency and we can get some good set, you know, get a good, good base on protecting the, the actual price for our licensed production partners. Uh, the secondary challenge that a lot of our producer partners are working for, a lot of our clients are dealing with, is burdensome administrative expenses. So the process for getting a batch through the pipeline, managing that daily batch, and then getting that batch to the laboratories and getting the result sets back so that they can get the product out to market is incredibly challenging. We've actually talked to some consumers, some, some clients, who have a, the more their, their, their um, their infrastructure is growing. So they start at 25,000 square feet, they go to 500,000 square feet and beyond and beyond. The burden, the administrative costs get higher and higher. So it becomes even more and more difficult to get that product through the testing cycle as we're, as we're kind of moving through the system. So what we use is we use enterprise technology, we integrate in with third-party systems, we make it rapid, quick, we digitize all of the documentation processes. And at the end of the day, we're the Expedia of the testing world, right? Onboard the labs, quickly get the product in and out as fast as possible and then take that testing data, place it in an immutable ledger, and then we feed it into third-party systems so that when you know, an Ample Organics or Weather Health Canada is tracking it, they can be tracking the testing data along with the genetic data as well. Uh, that leads into, again, our integration in the ecosystem. We fit in the middle. We're a, we're a play nicely in the sandbox uh, software company. We integrate in with any third-party system. Uh, this whole infrastructure is creating an ecosystem that can communicate with one another. And really what we're trying to do is, is raise the bar for integrity, uh, create a level of accountability to where the consumers that currently, unfortunately, don't really trust necessarily the LP product being grown. A lot of them are still leaning back on the gray market or black market today. We want that to change, uh, and we think we can change that through actionable information. The more information we can provide to customers, the more real-time testing data we can help our production partners provide to their customers and clients, we think the more loyalty that will, will be grown over a period of time in both the industry and you know, away from the, the kind of a gray market uh, marketplace that we definitely see a lot of in BC and uh, still a pretty good amount of it out here too. Um, we also are looking to raise the bar for labs. So we partner with laboratory facilities to implement better uh, digital documentation, better information uh, inflow and outflow so that the, uh, the product can move quicker and more rapidly. It's also making sure that that information is actionable, right? We need to be able to set a bit of a standard in the, across the board in the laboratory space. What you're oftentimes seeing today is the laboratory testing that's happening fluctuate all over the board, and that's because there's no real standards being implemented. And part of the reason there's no real standards being implemented is because and there are some technical aspects to where the way the mediums are being built for testing, but there hasn't been an agreed upon manner with which we test the product from a chemistry perspective. So the problem there is saying, okay, if we could keep raising the bar, well, we need to raise the bar to one equal point. And then we have the ability as we're tracking the data off the labs to be able to really police it, right? And be able to provide that information back to our partners to be able to see what labs are testing at what level, which are having consistent fluctuations in the marketplace, and all of the different framework in terms of, of what it is we do. Um, you'll also see that everything is built here on a certification and verification solution. This information we want to make available and accessible to consumers through that QR code seal, both in Canadian markets not as much on the packaging today, but we're definitely pushing for that because we think testing data should be real time and actionable. But in the US, you, you can link this same data point to all of the other education and advocacy points in the marketplace to be able to say, look, if we can verify the source of the material, verify the strains, then all that great customer data, all that great consumer data, all that great uh, education can be linked back to it as well. And in a lot of cases, we empower a lot of secondary solutions, which has been great in terms of the partnership ecosystem we've been able to evolve with our platform. And again, that unique QR code we want to see as, a, as that seal that people can look at it and say, you know what, I know that product's been validated. I know if I, I pull my smartphone out, I can pull the genetic data on it. I can pull the testing data on it, and I can know clearly this is what it says it is, and I can build trust around the products I'm buying. 
Um, we also integrate in with third-party seed to sale tracking systems uh, in real time. So we pull in all their facility IDs. Uh, so again, we're playing nicely with everybody, make sure it all works in the same ecosystem kind of across the board. And then we digitize all documentation uh, as well for licensed producers and, and laboratories as well. This is also to create both accountability uh, in the marketplace. Um, finally, KPIs on, on all the data that we bring in. And uh, we have a full registration process that's simple and easy. Looks like I'm out of time, so <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wrap up here and go through this. Uh, baseline of our team, again, very, uh, we Microsoft heavy development team out of Seattle, based in Vancouver. Uh, we're, we went live with the platform just a few months ago. 2018 was our year of growth. 2019 is our year of implementation and acceleration in the marketplace. Uh, thank you guys so much for your time, and uh, I'll pass the baton to the next uh, folks coming up.